Hello and welcome to Prep Playbook Playoff Preview Edition. I'm Jim Rapier. Today we'll be looking ahead to the third round of the high school football playoffs. And joining me to help with our preview is prep sports writer Mike Strom. How's it going, Mike? You ready to take a look ahead at some of the big games in week three? Absolutely. Let's, let's go. Let's get to it. All right, Mike, there are many great matchups set for this week, so we've divided them up into sort of rapid-fire categories. The first category is the rematch category, where Hanville and Destrehan and Rummel and Jesuit are set to tangle for the second time this season. Mike, intensity is not going to be lacking on these two, are they? Absolutely not. You know, uh, both, uh, two uh, both all four are tradition-rich programs, and certainly these are tradition-rich uh, series. Hanville, of course, hung with Destrehan in their opener uh, for the ha first half. Very low scoring, and then Destrehan was able to pull away. They've got uh, Mike Neal back at quarterback, so um, there might be a little bit of a different animal now for Destrehan. This should make for an exciting game. What about the uh, Catholic League rematch, Rummel and Jesuit? Uh, what are you expecting? Well, it was uh, low scoring the first time around, uh, ending 10-7 to in Rummel's favor. Uh, I actually am uh, looking for more scoring and, and you could say well 17 points it wouldn't take much but I mean I think that uh, uh, the winner is going to have to score at least three plus touchdowns to win the game. It should be interesting and uh, get there early it's not going to be too many seats available. All right in the intriguing matchup category you got Mandeville's stout Iron Gate defense having to face Acadiana and you've got Curtis and Brother Martin going against each other. What's your take on these two? Uh, well, Mandeville has uh, uh, lived and died on its uh, defense, ma mainly lived, I should say, for Coach LeCompte, uh, on its defense all season. Uh, I had the pleasure of watching them play in the season opener against Curtis, and uh, uh, their defense was outstanding that evening. And it certainly has not slacked off in the, uh, what are we now, 12 following weeks. Um, what was the second game you asked? Uh, the second game, of course, is... Um you have the Curtis Brother Martin matchup, and this should be pretty interesting as well. As Curtis's defense has been very stout, and Brother Martin has shown a proclivity to score a lot. Defense, we may ultimately uh, decide that one, but that's another game where I think uh, points uh, should be uh, plentiful. Um, uh, Martin certainly can score and has shown uh, its ability to do that with their two outstanding running backs, Jared West and uh, Bruce Jordan Swilling. Uh, Curtis is, will be a bit more challenged, but by the same token, I think Brother Martin's defense uh, is, you know, still has some proving to do, particularly when in facing an option offense. All right. Now, speaking of options, we got a lot for you here in this next category, which is the we're representing category. District 9, 4A's Warren Easton, Landry Walker, and Carr have all advanced. And in District 8, 2A, you've got Newman and Riverside both advancing. How challenging will it be, Mike, for all of these teams to keep it going? Uh, well, I certainly don't ex uh, expect a, a flush, so to speak. Um, I would probably uh, like uh, Riverside's chances a little bit more than Newman's, although, uh, you know, the Greenies after uh, beating uh, Opelousas Catholic last week, yeah, it, it's certainly uh, hard not to get on their bandwagon. Uh, and as a for, as a regards to the three District 9 4A teams, uh, quite frankly, I think it's proven itself over the last couple of years to be the best district in the state in the class 4a level and uh, I could see all three of those teams you know advancing Carr obviously having the, the biggest hill to climb in facing Neville very good all right last but not least Mike in the getting it done category you got St. Charles Catholic in division 2 and West St. John in class 1a they just keep winning what's the key for these two to keep this momentum going well, for St. Charles Catholic, they could be at a disadvantage this week. Uh, their court, starting quarterback, uh, his, uh, his status is still to be determined. Austin Weber, I'm talking about, he apparently had suffered a concussion in their uh, 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 last week's game. And so uh, he, at this point, he remains a question mark. West St. John is just, you know, they're playing at home. They're so hard to beat at home. They've just uh, uh, been an outstanding program, particularly as, as a Class 1A program. Uh, There's almost a been there, done that feel with them. I mean, they don't get rattled in the postseason. It's, it's been there, we, we know what we're doing, and they're at home. Right, and playing at home, it's a difficult place for anybody to go and win. All right, 
That's a look at just a few of the games on what looks to be a great schedule for the third week of the playoffs. Thanks for giving us some input, Mike. Well, thank you for having me. All right, don't forget you can follow all of Mike's work as well as all of our writers at highschoolsports.nola.com. That's it for this edition of Prep Playbook Playoff Preview Edition. And for Mike Strom, I'm Jim Rapier. Thanks for clicking on us, and we'll see you again next week.